but I just love it because, you know, it's always been in my heart, it's always been in my mind, and it's something that I live for, I can't stop doing it, and I, you know, I just want to share everything with the world, shout out to the brother Talik that made the, 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 the video um, about supporting me uh, yesterday, shout out to you, um, I just want to thank you to all my new subscribers, thank you, I love y'all, I appreciate y'all. I want to talk about the good white people. I don't like saying that word white. I prefer to say Caucasian or pink. And that it, and when you or when I say Caucasian or pink, you cannot relate it to any racial bias or hatred or anything like that because Caucasian people call themselves Caucasian and in fact since you are basically void of color a lot of times you do look sorta of pink but I don't like to use white because in the English language white represents that which is clean that which is kosher that which is righteous and all you know all that goody two-shoes type stuff and we know that the white people are not that your own history that you write with your own hands show that you are not righteous you are not good you are not pure you're not wholesome you're none of those things so you're not white people you are Caucasian or you are pink or you are a pale face, like we know or have heard that some of the native people have called you the pale face. Those who speak with fort tongue, that's who you are. You are not white people. But I, from this roster, I want to be fair with all. I'm going to be fair and I'm going to be just with all but I'm not going to call you white. <clears throat> I'm going to be fair with the white people, the pink people. I'm going to be just. There are those who say there are no good pink people. There are no good Caucasians. I beg uh, uh, to differ. In fact, I, I just differ. I don't, that's, that's not true. Because if there was not some sort of what we call righteous or good character, if, if a certain percentage of, of pink people did not have this, you would be in far worse shape. Some of the good white people have saved your ass whether you know it or not. So I cannot sit here and because I'm angry with what Caucasian people, a vast majority of Caucasian people have done, I can't sit here and tell that damn lie because it's a lie. Now just because I am fair, just because I am just, 
because I'm not going to judge you because you are white, because you're pink. That does not mean I advocate or suggest to us that we run around and marry the white people. I'm not going to do that. Like Serena Williams. Now, we fill our heads with this fantasies and delusions that things have changed and all. It's a facade. It's to make you believe that you've been accepted in this society. But remember, she is Serena Williams. Where does Serena Williams come from? Serena Williams comes from Compton, California. Now look at this fella. He's all happy and smiling and giggling. He's with Serena Williams, one of the world's greatest athletes. Ask this fella, when was the last time he went to Compton, California? That's where Serena come from. If Serena Williams was not a famous tennis player, and since he does not and probably never been to Compton, California, this would never have happened. But because Serena Williams put herself in a position where she actually ostracized herself from black men, and she surrounded herself with the good white people, males, then of course, this will happen. But I don't know why y'all so happy about stuff like this because the good white people, the Caucasian people, they are known for wanting to marry their dog. So I don't know why you think that you're doing everything you can and you think it's a good thing to get close and marry the good white people. They also want to marry their dog or their horse or their goat. And that's all you are, nothing but a pet to them, really. Even though Serena is, the, is this highly prized athlete, nothing has changed. She's in the same category. I wonder how I feel to be with a black woman. That's how they think. I wonder how it feel to be with a dog. I wonder how it feel to be with a cat. That's this unnatural, disgusting behavior, and you want to get with people, a uh, 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 people that think this way and behave this way. And you think that for some reason you're doing yourself a favor. The good white people, just like there are good pet owners. I'm good to my pet. You're good. You're a good pet owner, but you take an animal and you lock the animal up in your house, go to work for 10 or 12 hours, and the dog and the cat or the goose, whatever you got incarcerated, they can't go use the bathroom. They have to hold their urine. They have to hold their feces till you get home. The house catch on fire and they get burned up because they can't get out. Dogs and cats are carnivores. They eat meat. You go in the bag and give the dog and the cat some damn corn. You a good pet owner. Now, I want to tell you something. Now, when I was a child, I had a pet. Where's my pet at? Here's my pet. This is Angel Snupnup. Angel, this is the this is my pet I named my channel from. Angel's Angel Snupnup. Her name was Angel. Snupnup was my nickname or you know my child name that I made up for a dog. Angel Snupnup or Angel the Dog, and I added seven. Angel Snupnup seven. Now my dog, I was a pet owner. But where I lived and where I was at, my dog was free. My dog had no leash. My dog, uh, we did, of course, buy 
corn, because that's all a lot of dog food is, is a bunch of corn and soybeans, whatever. But my dog was free. My dog learned how to go out into the, uh, into the wheat fields and, and places, learn how to get her own rabbits and ducks and whatever. She was free. I knew since my dog was free that there may be a time when my dog probably would never come back home and she would disappear for two or three days and she was she was free. My dog was free. So my dog didn't have to come home and I wouldn't go looking for my dog because my dog was free. But you don't do that with your pet. And the good white people, they don't look at the black man or woman in this country. They don't view you as free. They view you as a pet. You don't understand that. You are a pet. That's the kind of love. And you do love your pet. But it's not the same way that they would love their mother or father or this government. I love my dog, but my dog is not equal to me. Serena will never be equal to them. She's a pet. The love is false. If it was not for slavery, Serena and this fellow would never have come together. It's a relationship. It's a facade by force. People come together involuntarily. You waiting on the good white people. Where are the good white people when physical slavery lasted over 300 years? Slavery in this country became a way of life. There are good white people. There were some who was against slavery. But see, the good white people, and that's who you're waiting on, they are the very minority. They don't control nothing. And you wait on the good white people to save you. Rather than doing something for yourself, you waiting on the good pink Caucasian man and woman to come save you. They cannot do anything. In fact, they know if they speak out too much, they will become a target for the majority who want to keep you in your place as a The love they have for us is a facade. It is not real. This what you see between Serena and this man is not real. Had he went to Compton, if he lived in Compton, maybe I could give him the benefit of a doubt. He only wants Serena because she is Serena Williams, the tennis player, not some poor broke as y'all say, ratchet ghetto chick living in Compton, California. So it's, it's all it's all fake. But we don't we don't mind living in fantasy and delusions. If you were surrounded by good people, why are you complaining? When I'm surrounded by good people, I don't complain. Why are you complaining about this or that? You have hopes that this majority is good and you get your education and you vote. You marry Caucasian people. One day, one day, things will be different. Why are these people so special? that you are willing to die and struggle and all this just to be close to them. Just like your pet. Just like the pet. You can kick a dog, beat up a dog, and they'll still come back wagging their tail. You act just like a pet. You act like a dog. My dog wouldn't go for that. If I kick my dog, my dog would bite the hell out of me. Because my dog knew what it was to be free. 
My dog will bite the hell out of me and run away and never come back again. I'm very sure of that. The relationship between my, me and my dog was real because my dog was free. I wasn't a pet owner. My dog became my friend. My dog can come and go as she pleased. We do not have a fake relationship like this. Now, but when you understand the process of what created the Negro, when it says, let us make man, we can take that same type of analogy and use it when speaking about the so-called Negro. Because we are made people. The reason why, see, if you understood the process of what, if you understood the process, what make a Negro, what made us the way that we are, then when you talk about why we can't unite, why we have this self-hatred, why, why, if you understood the process that made us what we are, all those questions would be answered. You hate yourself. And you cannot unite because you are made up, we are made up of various dark-skinned people brought together by force that the Caucasian people done. The original stuff died off, but we are the result of people, of dark-skinned people who did not like each other. In fact, you can see the same thing in Africa right now to this day. Europeans, the Chinese, and everybody is coming to exploit Africa. And those African people would not unite. They would not, not even to save their own life against an invader. They didn't do it back then. They still don't do it. And you won't do it. And you are a combination of all these things. That's why you feel with self-hatred. That's why you won't unite. And the reason why it's difficult for you to rebel against the good white people, the Caucasian people, is because his blood also runs through our veins. There is no specific look for the American Negro. There is no example. We can look like almost anybody. We can be as light as white. Or we can be as dark as uh, dark as coal. We have no specific look. We have no specific hue at all. This Negro, because we carry, we cannot. It's difficult for us to rebel against Caucasian people because, ooh, because they are your father. That's why you're attracted to them. You have people who say, you have women who say, I wish I could find a man just like my daddy. You have men who say, I wish I could find a woman just like my mother. It's difficult for you to rise and rebel against Caucasian people because they are your father. When you pray, you pray to him. That's who it is. Not only the, the, the picture of Jesus that they give you to hang on your wall, but you see him as, and you view them as your father because they are, they created you. We are their Frankenstein, we are their monster. They are the Frankenstein and we are their monster. And now slavery is over. What do they do with the monster they created? What do we do with this monster that's getting out of control? They make they keep you docile. They marry you, give you a million dollar contract, let you sing and let you dance. Or Nothing important. But pretty soon all that's gonna come to an end. What do we what are what do we do with this 
thing that we created, we don't have no use for anymore. It's a good question. And you wait on the people who is thinking about how they're going to destroy you. You wait on them to save you. I noticed something. <clears throat> Please bear with me as I get these thoughts together. Okay. Mm. I noticed something about you. I noticed something about you and you and you. I noticed something about these who call themselves African Americanists, the so called Negro, the Hebrew Israelite. The black Muslim, the Kamite, the Moor, whatever you want to call yourself. This is what I notice. On every corner, wherever you may find the descendant of slaves born in America, having dark skin, I call us the people of soul. Wherever you may find us, no matter what you believe, there is a place for you on every corner, on every avenue. You will find a church, a mosque, perhaps a synagogue, a temple, somewhere where you can worship and praise and honor your God. Even in the committed community and some of you who have different beliefs or spirituality outside of the traditional that we know of right now. You believe in some kind of God. You believe in some kind of uh, righteous behavior. I just heard the young uh, brother Y'all know him as Young Pharaoh. He said that it is better to be righteous than pro-black. Well, I did respond to Young Pharaoh and I did agree with him on that. However, when I look at Young Pharaoh, when I look at you, and you and you and all so many of you who claim God in order to claim God that means you must be seeking some type of righteousness young Pharaoh said teach your children not pro-blackness but just to be a righteous person but when we look at young Pharaoh young Pharaoh he says that he has much respect for women, but when young Pharaoh gets angry, he calls the black woman a bitch, a hoe, just like any other Negro in the street. Young Pharaoh, is that righteous behavior? Talking about who you going to kill, who you going to murder, who you going to beat up. Young Pharaoh, is that righteous behavior? His friend, his partner now, what's his name? Uh, Sarah Sutton said it. Talks about as long as you stay in shape, you can do cocaine. It's all right. Is that righteous behavior? The problem with you and the hypocrisy that you find in the black conscious community, in the black community, in the Negro community, Hebrew Israelite community, more black Muslim, or whatever you want to call yourself today, because y'all might be something else tomorrow, because you're always switching. You do everything except the right thing, like Spike Lee always said. You won't do the right thing. You'll do everything but the right thing in your righteousness. 
we find you know that you need to be righteous, but for some reason y'all can't do it. So in the Christian church, you see all these backsliders. And we always use the number one excuse. I'm not human. I already know that. I already know y'all are human. You're not a human being. Because a true human being wouldn't have no problem with righteous behavior. But you're not a human being. That's right, brother, because we're gods. Yes, you are a god. You are devils. You are Satan. Remember, Satan and devil is God. Just the evil side. Just the wicked side. The unrighteous side. And you know better because you say and claim that Jesus teaches you to be righteous, but you have a problem with being righteous because you're weak and you backslide. And the reason why you're weak and the reason why you backslide and the reason why you're having problems with righteous behavior is because in the reality is you love evil. You are little black devils, little black Muslim devils, little black Hebrew Israelite devils, more devils, comedic devils, whatever it is, you're little baby devils. Because evil is all you really have known. You never live in an environment of righteous behavior. In fact, some of you will even say righteous behavior is real boring. Somebody told me because I reject filth, because I reject nasty, vile, profane, trifling things that I represent a boring life. You want a life that's not boring so that you can smoke crack cocaine, heroin, so you can get drunk. And you lie, and you slander, and you gossip, and some of y'all will even do the ultimate, you will kill for fun. You talk righteous, but you really, you really don't want to be righteous. That's why you find righteous behavior boring. Although you do acknowledge, you do acknowledge as young Pharaoh will say, teach the children to be righteous. And you should. What is righteousness? Here I am on a platform. I do not acknowledge God. However, I do embrace what is called righteous lifestyle, a righteous behavior. But what is righteousness? Religion does not own a copyright to righteous behavior. Just because you believe in God. Matter of fact, if righteousness is so important, why aren't you righteous? There are people like myself who don't acknowledge God. There are people who are and call themselves atheists, maybe agnostics. They live more of a righteous lifestyle than many of you who talk about God, and you would think since God backs you up, since you know God, and you believe in God, and you're so close to God, sometimes God talk to y'all, you would think that you would be a more example of a righteous person than somebody who is an atheist, somebody who is an agnostic, or somebody like me who just don't acknowledge God. I don't acknowledge God, I have no idea what you're talking about, so how can I tell you, I, since I don't acknowledge God, I neither believe or don't believe because I have no idea what you're talking about. When you present and show me this God, then maybe I can tell you whether I believe in God or not because now I have met, I, I've had some type of hands-on experience and then I can make a choice whether or not should I believe or disbelieve, but until then, I cannot 
I, I can't even acknowledge God. I've never met one. I don't know nothing about it. I can't talk about what I don't know anything about. And none of you can show me your God. Only your belief. And your belief, what you show me, is weak. Because you acknowledge again that we should embrace a righteous lifestyle, but a righteous lifestyle is boring. Because you want to be nasty. You want to be vile. You want to be decadent. You like violence. When somebody talks filthy, when somebody is beefing, y'all like that. And you're like pigs at a trough and you just gather around the slop and all kinds of grease and filth come out of your mouth. You love it. But you claim that you love righteousness, but you're not attracted to righteous behavior. A true righteous person is boring. So somebody like me is boring. Because I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm not a whoremonger. All the things that you're talking about. I love righteous behavior. What is righteous behavior? The behavior that is beneficial to your life. That is right with your life. Nothing that is detrimental. The lying, the gossip, the slander, the murder, getting drunk, the whoremonging. That's not beneficial to you as an individual, nor is it beneficial to society or civilization. The greed. Many of you are greedy. Five and six houses. Five and six cars. You can only drive one car at a time. You can only live in one house at a time. You greedy, arrogant, selfish. But you acknowledge that we have to have or be a righteous person. And we recognize and we claim that we want change. So, we claim that we want change. We claim that we want to be better. But we're not willing to change for that better. You're not willing to change for that better. You find somebody like me boring. You find people who are righteous boring. Because the reality is. All of us was born in filth. And we love the filth. The Jesus of the Bible says. Or they said it of the Christ or the Jesus. Be in the world, but not of the world. So those who are truly righteous, you look strange in the eyes of those who talk righteous behavior. Something is wrong with you. You look different. Something is strange. But there should nothing be, nothing should be strange because... You should be in the world of filth, but not of filth. Like a person who takes a bath, living with people who don't bathe. You look strange. Why are you, why are you using that soap and water? We don't have to take no bath for once a year. So somebody who takes a bath every day, you are in a world, but you're not of that world. You look different. You act different. You carry yourself different. You're clean while they're dirty. And they don't even understand clean because they're, they are used to living in filth. So, y'all hypocritical. You're a bunch of fakes. you fraud. And you know better because you do acknowledge that righteous behavior is the way to go, but you don't want to change because you love evil. You like calling people niggas and whores and bitches and you like sucking stuff and ugh. 
But when you do, when you change, then and only then will the world change. It has no choice. I want to say how I feel. I feel so sad. I feel I am filled with great sorrow because I do not see a happy ending to the story of a people called Negro, a people called African Americanists, a people who view themselves in so many different ways. They are black Muslims, they are Christians, they are Hebrew Israelites and Moors and Kemetics and Nuwabians, and it goes on and on. You are confused. And in your confusion, in your distortions, in your delusions, and in your fantasy, while you have this immature mind and you drown it in all this nonsense because you refuse to grow up and you are in a Peter Pan state of mindset. The world continues to revolve, continues to spin, still marches forward while you are lost in time. So you keep talking about the past because you cannot comprehend a future. Your leaders have no vision. They have no purpose for you. They've set no goal. You are suffering from identity confusion. With all this going on, yet and still you have the nerve and you have the audacity to really believe that you are going to and your children are going to see and have a happy ending. That's not possible. It's not possible because you're not making it happen. You're not making it happen because you are loyal to that which is a failure. Loyal to that which may have had success but it served its time. When you are eating a hamburger and you use a ketchup packet, that's the end of that ketchup. You have to get another one to put on your hamburger if you still want ketchup. You still, our mentality, we're still trying to squeeze all the ketchup out of a packet that no longer has any of this, uh, this, uh, what's the, what's the word for, any more ketchup. It's over. Islam is over. Hebrew is like teachings is over. Kemetic teachings is over. Afrocentric teachings, all is over. It is your second death. And this second death is probably worse than the original position that we were placed in by those who created us, of which are the racist pink people. And you, I know you don't like it. But that's the reality. And that's another thing. You can't accept things just the way they are. You want people to continue to tell you these fairy tale stories, these feel good delusional stories that just not real. If you think about it, you don't want to think. You don't want to use your brain. You don't want to think things through. You want to think just enough to feel happy. That's what children do. They think just enough so they can feel happy or they can feel sad so they can feel so they can be emotional over something. That's how children do. Adults think things through. They have to think as a adult. Even in nature, in the animal kingdom, you have to think things through because if you don't, you could end up a meal for a predator and you're living in the house of a predator. 
you and I, we have been preyed upon going on now for 500 years. And all we do is talk. Blog talk radio is nothing but talk. YouTube videos and Facebook posting pictures and talking and you're and you refuse to do nothing because you're just like a child you waiting on your mama you waiting on your daddy you waiting on some kind of higher power the the most high something some spook some mysterious being to come and save you grab your hand and help you across the street because you are a child waiting on a parent you're a slave waiting on your slave master to come do something for you and it's not going to happen yet and still you're going to come to me and have the audacity to truly tell me you expect a happy ending you're lazy you don't want to do the job you don't want to sacrifice you don't want to die if necessary in the effort if you can't make it then you make a way for your children that you claim that you love you don't love nobody you're selfish and you're arrogant I want to talk to my subscribers. I want to talk to my listeners because today I'm not asking you for no damn money. That time might come. But right now, I don't want your damn money. I want you. I want some work. What kind of work we got to do? You have to counter not only what the Europeans have done to us, but we have to counter and we have to struggle and fight against the second mental death. The second mental death is these Afrocentric black conscious scholarship teachers that's keeping you dead, made you fall back into the grave. And because somebody colored death with dark skin, you loving being dead. You comfortable being a dead man. Welcome to this house, the church of the living soul. This house brings the dead to life and you will have eternal life forever. We have two deaths that we have to overcome. We're doing a work. I'm asking you, I'm asking you to do a work greater than Jesus. Because Jesus only raised people from the dead one time. I'm asking us to raise people from the dead two times. Mm. Now, I need your help. I need people, you need to spread this word. You know that what's coming from this ministry is the right thing. It's on time. It can get the job done. You know it in your soul. You know it in your heart. Help your brother. Help yourself. Help us as a people. We have to understand, accept reality so we can move forward instead of having a good time laying in the grave waiting for the day when somebody begin to throw the, sh the dirt on top of the casket and bury you forever. Then it's over. Listen. I was incarcerated. I understand our situation. I was incarcerated. We as a people, we are caught. The people of soul, we are incarcerated. We are confined. In fact, slavery, incarceration, that's all that we've ever known going on 500 years. I understand incarceration. I understand the slave mentality 1,000%. When I was incarcerated, I was religious. I believed in God. I believed in Allah. I believed in the prophets. I believed in Jesus and Moses and Abraham and all, all that stuff. And those who were my oppressors, they laughed at me. I could quote the Quran said this and the Bible said that. And America is fallen. America is doomed. That was way back in 1997. America is still here. America, it might be falling, but it's, it's not falling no time soon. And in the meantime, what is going to happen to you and me? So I'm talking about 
Elijah Muhammad. I'm talking about what Jesus done. I'm talking about Dr. King and the people that had me incarcerated. They look at me like I was a fool. They looked at me like I was in crazy. Matter of fact, that's what they wrote down. He believes he's Jesus. He believes he's Dr. Martin Luther King. He believes he's Elijah Muhammad. This guy really has a mental problem. And your oppressor don't give a damn about how you talk. He's a cracker. He uh, a damn honky and uh, you a Nazi. You call these people all these different names. They don't give a damn because you still in their jail. They don't give a damn. You still under my control. If I don't feed you nigga, you don't eat. I don't give a damn about what you talking about. Call me a cracker. Call me a devil. You can call me anything you want to. I can cut your food, your water, even your air off anytime I feel like it. What you going to do? So what I'm wrong? What you going to do about it? I proved over and over again that what they were doing to me was wrong. So what? I don't care what you prove. I don't care what you know. All this high sedity black scholarship and we know the history they don't give a damn about what you know they don't give a damn about your intelligence and how smart you are so what what you gonna do you still a nigga you still a slave so the hell what and that's what we do day in and day out and your situation don't change and you actually tolerate it and you again you have the audacity to believe there's going to be a happy ending. There's not going to be a happy ending for the so-called American Negro, the people that I call soul people. In order to have an opportunity to escape, if the time has not expired, because some of y'all think time is going to wait on you. Time is not going to wait on you. Time continues to tick. Time marches forward. It's not going to wait on you. And if you wait too long, and if you wait too long, you enter the point of no return. When you are in a car and you are, you get into a skid, you only have a few seconds to get that car right. Because if you don't get that car right, you enter what is called the point of no return. There is no getting out of the skid. You in it now. And what happens, happens. So, time is not going to wait on you. And if you wait too long, you could enter. Perhaps we are already in the point of no return. What happens, happens. But now I was incarcerated. And I talked about Allah. And I talked about Jesus. And I talked about uh, all these, they, the, the oppressor don't give a damn what you know. Uh, you is my nigga. You is my slave. The only thing that saved me, the only thing that changed my condition, I had to reevaluate my thinking process. I had to under, see. Listen, you have to understand and accept the reality of what you in. So I had to understand exactly what has happened to me and then I had to fight then I had to find the right knowledge I had to liberate my mind of all the nonsense all this stuff that I got going on because it's not doing nothing for me time marches on time is not going to wait for me I began to help other people and by helping other people I began my journey into the correct knowledge that I needed and then I actually found right knowledge and when you find right knowledge people are gonna make mockery of you oh that don't work and in the beginning it looks like it's not going to work look like it's, you're going to fail because you don't you don't know how to use this new knowledge that you just got but 
understand your enemies know. Your enemies know when you find the right thing. They are going to discourage you. They are going to try to get you off the, as the Quran said, the right path. But they know that you finally found the key to open the door. This is the key. This is the key that can open the door that you're looking for. Once and for all. But in order to turn the key, to use the key, you have to liberate your mind. You can't be a slave. Only a free man, only a free mind can use this key to open that door. You have to have right knowledge. You have to have the appropriate knowledge in order to get a real solution. A fictional, delusional, fantasy answer cannot solve a real problem. You're dealing with reality. You're dealing with A, you're dealing with something that is real. And these things, these thoughts, and these beliefs that we have going on in our mind, that's not real. You have to liberate your mind. I'm asking us, I want you to support this ministry. You need to speak. Bring the people to me. Let us liberate the mind so we can change the condition. You don't have to like nobody. Forget what somebody said about you, blah, 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 blah. If you real, I'm not looking for your money. I'm not looking for fame. I'm not looking for praise. I'm not looking. I want us to be free. The idea of freedom. In fact, really, there's no such thing as freedom. Because in order to be free, there is no law. But So we have to have law. But we want to be liberated. We want to be liberated from that which oppress us. A better word than freedom. Because actually you cannot be free. There must be law. There must be something there in order to maintain some kind of order. And if you're free, there is no order. There is mayhem and chaos. And we don't want that. Time waits for no one. We need to, you need to share these videos. It don't cost you nothing to share these videos. It don't take nothing for you to spread the word. If you can't speak, bring them here. Bring the people here. Challenge these leaders that have no purpose, have no goal, have no vision, have no identity for you. They can't do. They are a failure. Send them my way. I don't want Tom, Dick, and Harry. I want the big boys. Bring them here. We need to destroy them. We need to show them. We need to show the, their followers, this ain't the way to go. Look how weak your leadership, these people that y'all following and foaming at the mouth, they're no good. They, they're not, they're, they're not, they're not doing, they don't, they're not, they don't have appropriate knowledge. That's why your condition does not change. So I don't want your money. I want your help. Help me spread real truth. Help me get us up out of the second grave. And don't, what does this what does all this say about you? So you have Sonetta. The House of Consciousness, Black News 102, Sonetta TV, and all like this. He is calling Sarah Susan City a homosexual. Now, he says that his family, oh wow, see, 
You know this man is a homosexual. He has homosexual tendency, right? Sonata, right? You saying that this man is a homosexual. Now, since you know that he's a homosexual, he has homosexual tendency. And see, there's a rumor that your fellow, what is his name? Shaka Almost, whatever, with the long ponytail. I've never listened to him really speak. I don't know nothing about that, that brother or whatever. I guess we can call each other. Y'all, I don't know. We don't act like brothers. I don't even like using the word. But there's a rumor he might be homosexual. There's a lot of homosexuality going on in the house of consciousness, if that's the case. But here you are, Sonetta. You say your wife and your children is gone. And it's just you and Seti. And you know that Seti is a homosexual, right? What does this say about you, Sonetta? It's just you and Seti, the homosexual, in your house by yourself. Oh, we just we just doing videos. Uh, no, y'all just doing vidi booty holes. <laughs> Oh, oh, wow. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the real reason why Sonetta is upset. Because he missing the peanut butter. We don't need no jelly. We just want some peanut butter. And so, since, since y'all are after each other's video booty old, <laughs> y'all got this thing for peanut butter. You angry at at Seti because he get the young booty and you didn't get a chance to get some of that. And is that what is that what it's all about? Now, I'm just I'm just saying you the one that's calling people homosexual or whatever, faggot or whatever, but you are in the house with the man by yourself. See, that's it. By yourself. With a person you think is a homosexual, or you know is a homosexual, maybe that's what it's all about. Maybe that's what all maybe polite is using all his wives and all that's just a front from the house of homosexuality conscious. That's what that's what maybe that's what it's all about. A whole gang of y'all, nothing but a bunch of homosexuals. And you know that used to be the thing. In the so-called black community, people always talk about the brother that's undercover, you know, on the down low. That don't negate black conscious guys. You can talk about black power, the power of the black booty. Y'all man, cause y'all chasing man booty. Woo. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you now. See, I couldn't be a homosexual because 